Where? My god, you're on stage every day. I know, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going live. It's already live, I think. Okay, so we just have to wait for 30 seconds probably. So everyone tunes in. Are you in there? You need to skip channel. No. Yeah. For the other one. Yeah, oh, yeah. One. No, I think we are. Okay. We are. Uh, I need to move a little bit in for the other one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a tight fit. <laughs> but we are fine. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, we're having people. Tune in right this. now. That's good. Oh, yeah. give me map. Let me tune in. And I can do it here. Okay, I'm gonna put it on mute though. Yeah, you're gonna have to skip in just a little bit. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Amit, you actually cut a little bit, but I think that's okay. That's okay. They see you enough, right? What are you oh, doing? I'm fine. I'm making sure I can read this. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. So hi guys. This is Aditya. This is Amit. And this is... Hey, Mo Mo oh. <laughs> <laughs> Malik. Panchali. <laughs> so guys, we are at our place and Malik uh, happened to drop by. He was just in the neighborhood. <laughs> 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 I was like, they were outside waving. I was like, let me come in. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> well, you are, you have a day off today. I have a day off, that's right. That's and right. yeah, he's on Broadway. I'm doing a Broadway play called Grand Horizons. Which that's is right. so amazing. Right. And I'm so into Broadway and theater. Oh. Oh, I did, I minored in theater. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, Never really pursued actual theater, but I love right. I love everything about performing and being on stage. Well, you guys have to come. And, and I'm just dramatic in real life, so I guess yeah. yeah. it counts too. <laughs> I'm getting a strong. <laughs> he wins the Oscar in real life, you know? I think so. Oscars is really nice, but yeah. Do you want to introduce what we're doing today? We are happening? here. I know some of you must have seen our stories before. Um, we posted about this book. Now, if you know me, you know I don't really read, but this is probably the first book I read from cover to cover in a really long time. Um, and that's, a, I surprised myself to be honest. <laughs> um, and what I, what I loved about it, and we've talked about this before, it's such an easy read. Um, I think it's for all ages. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think there's so much relatability. I always look for content, whether it's a TV show or a book that, you know, you can relate to, because if you can't relate to it, you know, right. why are you watching or reading it? So this is like, it's crazy. It's like my life story also. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's and that's, scary, yeah. Um, I know many of you who, whether you live in India or the U.S. or wherever you are in the world, I, I know that many of you probably feel like the character in this book does. We'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, and um, let's just get into, I guess, just why you wrote it in the first place. Yeah. Because what, that's... Um, so I, I, I can do a little book talk on... So the book's about... Um, the lead character's name is Rahul Kapoor. He's a 12-year-old Indian-American kid mm -hmm. who's beginning to realize that he's gay and he's being bullied at school for his cultural identity and for the fact that he's gay. And, um, and so the book is, well, one night his grandfather, who is uh, his favorite person right. in the whole world, Pai, right. which, is, which is a character that's very much based on my own, both like my own grandfather and my own grandmother, oh, wow. okay. um, tells him a story. And I think it's a story that probably a lot of us can relate to or some version of that story about um, just, you know, if you're just the best at something, all of your other problems will go away. Go away. And so, especially like in Indian American or mm -hmm. Indian culture, I think we, yeah. we get that a lot. So Rahul takes that to heart and he sets off on this mission to prove that he's the best at something. And it's really a mission to prove his self worth because he doesn't feel like he's good enough. Right. Um, and so, you know, I wrote, it's so great to hear that you um, were like, this is my childhood because I feel yeah. like one of the, one of the thing, one of the reasons I set out to write this book is that growing up, I never saw characters who looked like me right. um, in the books I read or in the TV shows I, I mean, watched. Brown, or and... brown for sure, yes. and certainly no gay characters. No gay guys at all, yes. And so like, that makes you feel mm -hmm. really alone yeah. in the world. And it's sort of, I know for me, I can speak to myself, but I'm hearing from so many people who read the book that it's so similar to them too, is that it made me think I had to be somebody else. It made right. me think that like, I had to be, to be honest, like more white or more straight just to like survive. Um, so sadly, I don't, I still don't think there's that many characters in books for young people that are representing who they are. And so I, that's yeah. why I wrote the book. And so what's been amazing is the book is actually written for a middle school audience, you know, for like eight to 14 right. year olds. But, you know, I feel like adults are really responding to it because it's the story we never got to read when we were, right. when we were growing right. up. Yeah. yeah. And I think, so one of the, and by the way, we're going to get to everyone's, I know people are asking us questions. Okay. Um, people are asking us questions. We are hundred percent going to get to some questions. No, but before um, we get into that, I want to introduce who he is, what his background okay. is, oh, what yeah. he does. We didn't talk about the most important okay. part. So we're jumping yes. around. Yes. <laughs> Stay with us. So tell <laughs> us where did you grow up? 
what did you want to be and what do you do today? Yeah, so I was born in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we lived there for just a couple years and then we moved to Indiana, which is where this book is set. Right. Although I didn't actually live in Indiana mm -hmm. um, in middle school. We, we left Indiana by the time I was like seven. Then we lived in Houston, Texas for a year. Then in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. So there was no like, shortage of Indians in Houston, Texas. No shortage of Indians in Houston, Texas. But we were only there for a year yeah. and I was seven. And you know, I gotta admit, it was like, it was the 80s and there was actually like True. a lot of right. racism right. Oh. against Mexicans. Yes. And all the, really? I remember all the kids we went to school with thought we were Mexican. So there was like this double racism mm -hmm. thing happening where it was like, we get called and like you know Mexican slurs. My sister and oh, I would be like, confused. "Hey, that's so mean!" And be like, totally "That's off. not even who we are." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was like it was it was it was a weird time. And then we moved to Tampa, Florida, which is where I did all of middle school and um, and high school. And I knew that I wanted to be an actor uh, when I was like five years old. Mm -hmm. I told my parents, I don't know why, but I, I do think that- like, Wait, you were five and you told your parents you want to be an actor? Yeah, like I think all the other kids were like, wow. I want to be a fireman. And I was like, I want to be an actor. So what inspired you for, to say, I want to become an actor? Because yeah. that's not something kids typically would say. Yeah. They would they would want to say, I want to be a star. I just right, thought so. Right, yes, right, right. Yes. But to yeah. act specifically. I mean, I think maybe I did want to be a star. <laughs> <This one laughs> well, and you, you are. are. You are, right? <laughs> So there we go. But I but I also, you know, my, my parents loved old Bollywood movies, and so we, we grew up yeah. watching them even as a kid. And um, But I also think that, like, you know, now as an artist, I think that art's a way to express who you really are. But as a kid, I was like, it was also right. like a way to disappear. It was like, oh, if I could be that, then, like, I can kind of run away from right. this life. Because I think even mm -hmm. at five, like, I felt sort of uncomfortable in my own skin. You right. know what? I, I don't want to like, it wasn't like pathological or right, anything, right. but just, but, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like a way I to escape. I, I really relate to that because, um, you know, as you know, we talked a little bit about it. I dance. Yes. Um, yeah. And so growing up, dance was an escape for me, as it is for many people, just to kind of like not be yourself. You could do anything you want. I, right. I'm pretty sh maybe shy in person, but I'm, when I'm on stage. Are you? <laughs> well, sort of. Like, Good question. Sort of, <laughs> sort of a little bit more reserved than I would be on stage, I would say. And like, so yeah, I, I completely relate to that because I feel like you could be anyone you want and that's the cool part about it. Yeah. But it's also kind of like, the sort of like... I think it's niche. a shield because you could just say, oh, I was just doing it because I was acting, but it might just be real you, but you don't have to admit to it because it's an act. You well, are in the profession. And I think, I feel like for a lot of kids, like theater or dance or art, it's a way to like express yourself right. in that safe space. Right. And the other kids who are there generally are also artistic so it's yeah. like you're not being shamed for right. for sure right for, for, yeah. so it's, it's a nice yeah. place for outlet as an outlet to let go of your inhibitions and actually be yourself i think so that's yeah. what it is yes. so yeah. we're talking specifically about the best at it um and we've shared this before um and i guess the first thing is how much of this book is your real life and how much yeah. of it is just a story that you wanted to tell right yeah so i mean just to go back to that first question mm -hmm. like what do i what do i do now so for those of you who don't know who are tuning in, I'm I'm an uh, I'm an actor now, so like that worked out. <laughs> I think, I think everyone great. knows that. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I mean, like Grant, I'm doing a Broadway play. So Broadway, what up? I mean, you know, Call them in. I mean, I, Thirty Rock was a big series I did for a long time. A show called Weeds on yeah. Showtime. Um, but also for younger audiences, and I'm finding this is like, well, I think adults too. But it, but going to middle schools and talking about the book, I played uh, Baljeet on Phineas and Ferb, mm -hmm. and Sanjay on a cartoon called Sanjay and Craig. Um, By the so way, like, he, yeah. he doesn't look like he has experience because he has such a young face. I know. <laughs> but he's been in this industry for a long for time. For a long time. Right. Yeah. And yeah. You know, you could I, honestly you you could look like you look like you're so young. So thank like, you. It, it could you. go for like oh, you, just started. In. you just yeah. started. Yeah. Yeah. You're a struggling actor, right? But no, he's, <laughs> he's like he's made it. That done that. Yes. <laughs> um, and now on Broadway. And now on Broadway. But but uh, the reason I bring that up is that in the in the book, uh, Rahul's trying to he's figuring out what he's the best at. So he tries a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things he tries is joining the mathletes, and that was something that I did. Okay. In middle school, I was I was a mathlete. So you're I, a math nerd. So you I was, was a math nerd. And now it's like work. all gone. But I was I was definitely. Really? And is that did that come natural to you, or was that something you tried to be like? You were like, I'm gonna focus on math. Well, yeah. for Rahul, it was natural. It was pretty natural. It was for pretty Rahul. natural for me too. Yeah. Like, like okay. school, um, actually came pretty easily. Like I had to work hard at it, but it actually created this dichotomy where, you know, like, 
in that world of pressure right. from Indian aunties and uncles that were like, be a doctor, <laughs> be an engineer. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. I know many of you yeah. can probably relate to your parents thinking that, you know, like what you want to do, what, well, they, what, what they want you to do is math, either math, science, or engineering related. So um, here, it's like in the US, I don't know if it's like that in India, it's like doctors, everything. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same thing yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. Now lawyers kind of come into the picture, but you know, we've all kind of in many ways gone against that yeah you, you're pursuing well, acting yeah. well not yeah. me well, I, well you but you still have a creative right right so uh, uh, so for those who know kind of what i do <laughs> i work for a bank but then i'm like super creative i paint i dance here and there so i think for me reading his story was like okay i could check off a few points which i went through when i was young and mm -hmm. in the same age group because uh we'll get more into it but i yeah. think we talked about the ocd part of rahul and how yeah. I connect with it. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I think uh, there were references like, I, I know that Amit might feel more connected because you grew up in America as well, mm -hmm. like Rahul in the book, but I grew up in India. So I think it was a little different for me, mm -hmm. but there were a lot of points in the book where I also connected. Right, yeah. right. Well, I think what's really interesting about the entire thing is you, you wrote this, what, last year? Uh, you know, I started the process in 20, oh my gosh, 20, like 16 is when the idea was born. Wow. 2016. But this story is when you were a child. Now, so how many years ago was that? Like more than 20 years ago, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. So, so, so it's so crazy that something that the emotions he felt are so relatable to like generations like ours and, and even younger kids. Like yeah. it's like what you're writing is so relevant. And it, it's, it's crazy that we haven't found comfort in just being ourselves. And after all these years, right. we're still as Indian Americans who've, really made it we've made it i mean like we're everywhere um we're still struggling with those ideas of identity and yeah. um i find that to be really interesting it's like so this book you know even though it's written by him and he was he grew up um in america i feel like anyone in the world can right. relate to it that's true at any age and um yeah i think that's why i think that's why people should read it um but let's talk more about i guess rahul himself in the i think yeah. i wanted to ask him a question about the writing aspect of okay it. yeah so did you start from the first chapter or if you think of the book, like you said, the idea was born in 2016. Yeah. What was the first thing that came to your head out of the book and you were like, that's going to be the center and I'm going to write the story around it. I'm assuming that's how... Sort of. I mean, so I had some friends in the literary world who, uh, we were talking about representation. We were talking about the fact that like, it's so important that young people see themselves on television or, or in the movies and right. they were like, you know, that's the same thing is true for books. And they were like, have you ever thought about writing a book? Like your own sort of experience mm -hmm. I think could be really helpful to kids. And I was like, no, 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 I'm like, I'm not a writer. Writing is really hard. <laughs> <It is. laughs> um, but then I went home and I read a bunch of middle grade books and I was like, I actually think I have a story to tell. And so, you know, you were asking how much of me is in the character, character Rahul. A lot, you know, like a lot of the circumstances are, are very fictional. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he tries out for a sports team that I didn't do. I was like very bad at sports. Although same. he's not great at sports either. Same. <laughs> but the same feeling he had is a, a, some, you had a similar feeling. Like yeah. He wanted to be good at it, but it wasn't something that interested you. Yes, exactly. Right, right. right. exactly. Because and obviously he, growing up in the U.S., sports are kind of like everything. Right? Oh my gosh, like, yeah. yeah. It's it's a if you excel in sports, you're popular right. automatically. Right. 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 You've made it, right? right. So, yeah. 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 I Actually, get that. that's very true for India also. Let me tell is you it? that. Yeah. You have to study, but if you're on the sports team, uh, like there is an unsaid like, oh, he's fine, even if he doesn't do that with right, his like, absolutely. Be because yeah. he's representing the school at a national level or stuff like that. Yeah. I think sports come in very, yeah. with a lot of weightage. That's what I feel. Yeah. And I was really bad at it. <laughs> like, no, the only, there was only once in India, you know how cricket is a big game in India to all the followers from India. And I was really bad at it. Like I was put on spot so many times that I had to go bad and I was like, well, this cannot be happening to me right now. I can't do and it. And it's so shaming, it is, right? Like, it, it feels is, so yeah. bad. Well, yeah. I, my yeah. story is I actually loved playing sports when I was really young, but then I guess I thought I was better at it than <laughs> And when people used to make fun of me, I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing any of this anymore. And the only thing I, I, the only thing I ever got praised for was dance. I was like, all right, let me stick to this. This is working, I guess. So you were that's the best great, at it. But that's great that you got praised yeah. for it. Well, yeah, 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 I mean... It's yeah. crazy. Um, but that emotional content of like, I think like all those feelings mm -hmm. are, that they're, all the emotional content of the book is, is very much like my own experience. You know, I think like the idea that when I was a kid, I didn't even, I didn't like, people, it's, it is different now. Like, but, like people, we do talk about like LGBT stuff. It's right. in the news, you know, we have a, a presidential candidate right. who's openly gay. Mm -hmm. But when I was a kid, I didn't know a single openly gay person. 
And so for me, like to even be able to identify those feelings to say like, oh, like I, I look at that other boy and in the same way that in middle school, other boys are trying right. to find other girls cute. Right. Like I know I find him cute, but I don't even know how to like, I don't know what that means. And so there was just a lot of confusion around like, do I want to be like him? Do I want to look like him? Do I want to actually be with him? You know, just like trying to figure that out. And so that is very present in the book. And I have to say that like, even though we have so much conversation about that now, when I go to middle schools and talk about right. the book, Nobody... kids come up to me and they're like, it is still confusing. And so I think that there is like a yes. universal aspect to that. And by the way, just to like pitch, I also find that the thing about Rahul is that he's really just a kid who feels different. Right who wants so badly to fit in. And most kids feel that way. So even if you're not struggling with your sexual identity or your cultural identity, I think, I think you know, I, I went to a school um, where I, I ostensibly, I think a straight white boy, like I was like, how many of you guys ever feel different? He raised his hand, he was like, you know, he talked about why he feels different. And I was like, yes, because we all feel different, you know, so. I think, well, what I was gonna say is, I think what's really interesting about that is like, um, everyone is, trying to define themselves by parameters that have been like already set, you know, for society. Yeah. And like, why do you need to know what those feelings are? Like, wh why do you have to say, well, I feel like this about this person, that means I'm this, or, the, right. or that, why does that even matter, right? Yeah. Like, why can't you just have this relationship with a friend or someone you might be interested in or any, or you just relate to, right. and that just be it? Why does it, it have to be defined? And why, into yeah. this thing, yeah. And, um, yeah. While reading it, I mean, I feel like that's something I struggled with too, in, not in terms of um, being gay or anything like that, but I've always had like a, a feeling, emotional feelings towards my friends in ways I couldn't describe to other people. Mm -hmm. Like I was always rather emotionally invested in people um, more than they ever thought probably, or hmm. that uh, people around me thought was okay. So um, interesting. that was my first, I guess now I look back and I'm like, maybe those were the signs, like the telltelling signs, but I don't even know if that's true. Um, I never had any feeling, like I never had any sexual attraction. At that time, I didn't even think like that. Yeah. But I had like emotional feelings towards, towards both sexes. But then I don't know if that's really, is that really, does that, is it like a homosexual? Yeah. Not Like, is it, what is that? I mean, or is that just growing up? And I mean, why? I think there could be multiple ways we can describe it. I think, but as a kid, when you're growing up, uh, it's confusion. That's what I would call it. Because I don't think even now our family so openly discuss with us, sit down and discuss that. Yeah, I don't like the word confusion because why is it confusing if it's just... Because the there is no feel. open communication from the family. Everyone, right. when you're growing up, it's it's by the book. Uh, when you grow up, you're going to find the girl of your dreams or the man of your right. dreams and you're right. going to settle right. down. Nobody ever says to us that, oh, you might find a man of your dreams instead of a girl of your dreams. Yeah. So I think that's where the confusion yeah. stems from because we don't know any other version of the truth. We are taught or we, are, we learn one version and we try to stick with it. And then it takes us years to actually find a way and say, no, there is a parallel universe or a parallel life which I could live. Yeah, and yeah, then we yeah. try to bring it into mainstream. And that's some of the, like, like, you know, I tried to bring that in the book with Rahul has this um, gaggle of Indian, his mom's friends, right. his Indian aunties, who he calls the auntie squad. Nandita, you know, I, I love, love the auntie squad. Oh, yeah. The samosa so squad. I had no problem with the samosa part. <laughs> like, we yes, are, these days, up. we are the auntie squad. The <laughs> I know, I know. We've graduated in yeah. the yeah. world. <laughs> but you know, like, they're not, they're so loving and they only want the best for him, right. but they, they also needle him with the, like, Who's that, you know, his best friend is a girl. Like, who's the girl you're hanging out with? Yeah. You know, it's never too early to be thinking about right. marriage. And right. yeah. the idea that we get these um, subtle or not so subtle messages that there is, that, that one way is going to earn you the love of your community. Right. And part of what I think Rahul's journey and my own journey in, in my life was um, having the courage to be like, no, this is actually who I am. And then, and I, I think this has happened for you guys too, yes. you know, like most of like my community has come out to be like, we love you for that. Right. We, we support you for that. You know, people that I, that I was t so terrified yes. of because I felt like they were like, you know, representing yeah. old school ideas that were like, no, we just want you to be happy. You know, there's of course been the opposite side of that too, but you know, and, and so, you know, for me, it was important in the book that, that his struggle was also super internal, that he, just, right. that it was like, that he, um, that although there were these messages from the outside world and that there were, you know, kids bullying him, that most of it was like, can I be comfortable with being myself on the inside? Because right. I think that's the biggest journey. I don't know what it was like Absolutely. for you guys. But well, in, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, like, 
I think that's, I don't want to give away too much of the ending or like where, how it concludes. Yeah. But I do want to say it does go sort of full circle in a, in a sense, um, Rahul's journey. But when do you feel like you as a person, not, as, not in this book, but in your life, do you feel like you said, you know what, the way I am is okay. And I'm going to like, I'll be, I'll just be okay with that. Like, yeah. I, when did you come to that? God, I wish I could Have say. Have you heard the question somewhere? I know, I know. I you're really think. bringing Have it out. Questions. It's like the Barbara Walters in here. <laughs> I started like crying. <laughs> I, um, I, I wish I could like, I wish I could say like something that was like super positive and affirming, but the truth is it took me a long time. I think I was like in my mid twenties when I finally was like, this is who I am to myself. And then I think like like a lot of people, the coming out process just kept happening. You know, first it was some friends, mm -hmm. then it was some family, then it was more family. Then as an actor, it was sort of like being able to, you know, walk a red carpet right. with my now husband. It was like, so the process was really gradual. And um, in the book, like I wrote a scene, like one of, I think, you know, I wrote a scene where Rahul has a confrontation with his like best friend who's basically trying to ask him if he's gay and he's like why are you asking me this and he gets really upset that happened to me like in my 20s wow. and I was like I wish I could have had that conversation when I was 12 and someone could have said like it's okay right you can get <laughs> emotional but like but uh because right. and so I wrote in the book you know conversations that I'm like if I could have had these at this age then um there wouldn't have been all the torture of right. like those years uh, where I was trying to figure out who I was. Like you almost missed out on those years yeah. because you were just struggling internally, right? Trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, I feel like so many people can relate to that. Yeah. Even now, you know, and, and, and people sort of do know it's okay. I mean, it's getting right. there, yeah, getting yeah. there, but they're still, they still have that struggle, you know, with them. And I think more than just the gay, straight, you know, whatever, whatever you identify with, I think the book also covers just like feeling a sense of not belonging, mm -hmm. like, it, mm -hmm. which is in our case being brown as well. Yeah, right? in growing up in the U.S. and not really belonging here. Um, so anyone who's of any racial background, or I don't know, I mean, everyone feels I like think they don't it's a belong. universal book for all age groups, yeah. every sex and every racial background. I One, would say that. Yes. You know, the the I always think about, um, and this is such an amazing book. So I don't mean to like compare my books to it, but the book Wonder. I don't know if you guys know that book, but it's about a. It's such a beautiful book. It's about a kid who has a facial deformity. Okay. And he and he's starting school, and it's like about sort of being like you know him coming into his own and I I think I don't I don't have that mm -hmm. but I certainly have questions about like do I look a certain way or whatever but I related to his journey and I think that so many people again like who feel different or who just want to belong um will relate to that yeah so in the book uh I know that um Rahul has a safe place in Chelsea uh -huh. his best yeah friend. yeah so and by like yeah. his grandfather but he is more of a voice kind of by talks about overall the life perspective not just him being gay uh -huh, but uh -huh. overall that what he has to do to be a best at something right. and how his life would fall into places like uh, fall into the right track but who how did you come up with the character of Chelsea because a lot of our friends uh, when I came out I came out to my best friend first uh -huh, uh -huh. so when I read that he he she there's a moment in the book when Rahul is about to say the truth and she says to him Rahul you don't have to do it because, but he goes on and does it. That's what happened to me when I actually came out to my best friend. She already knew. And uh, she said, you don't have to say it, it's fine. Because she was trying to make sure I'm comfortable. But then I went ahead and said it and it felt different. Yeah. So is there an inspiration from your life which inspired you <laughs> to put that character? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, my best friend in like middle school and high school is this, was this, is this woman. She, she now lives in the UK, so we don't see each other nearly enough, but this woman named Nicole Vanderbilt. Okay. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> um, and we were, we were like inseparable in middle school and high school. And I think like, you know, I look back and I'm like, I'm so glad I had, I wrote this in the acknowledgements in the, in the book. I think, you know, it's like the best friend every middle schooler right. should have because right. it's like, that person who's always by your side, who's always making you laugh, who's, and you know, I think we have this unspoken thing mm -hmm. of like, you don't have to tell me, it's fine. And especially because it took me so long to actually um, tell her. But that moment in the book was really important to me too, because, you know, I talked about Rahul's internal journey right. and I didn't want the best, I didn't, I wanted him to be able to stand up on his own and say it. And so to have someone say like, you don't have to do anything and say, no, I want to as opposed to like the other person saying like, mm -hmm. tell me, tell me, tell me. I wanted it to be about him um, doing that. But I, I love that you had a, yes, very uh, similar a best friend too. And I feel like a lot of us did. Yeah, I, don't know absolutely. Was, like, I mean, same with him, I think. Like, uh, yeah, kind I mean, of like a... I've had like those best friends right, at multiple right, stages. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt like, actually it would have been fine at that point. If I, if I knew myself, it would have been fine to openly say it. But I think what's 
what's even crazier, and I, I'm going to come back to that point, is like, I, what I loved about Chelsea was the fact that she didn't, she didn't even feel the need that you needed to define yourself. Yeah. Like that, I think, is still an issue that like, you know, isn't talked about enough. Like, why do you need to say it? Like, coming out is one thing. Right. Um, but like, if you're unsure, if you're still internally struggling and someone can sense it, it doesn't need to be defined. It doesn't need to be right. talked about as that's much. True. Go through those emotions. Like, yeah. let, yeah. let it happen. I be- think that's also a true ally. Like, because the LGBTQ community has allies. And every, a lot of people, a lot of my straight friends ask me, what should I do in order for you to be comfortable? Or for someone who's very young and coming out, what should we do? I think this would be a great point that give them time, let them speak their own truth. Uh, do not try to force it out of them. And uh, Chelsea didn't do any of those in the books. And I think that's where Rahul and Chelsea kind of share this special bond and they have like yeah. the best moments throughout the book. But also, if I'm not mistaken, at that point, Rahul wasn't even sure himself about those feelings. Like, yeah, yeah. Right? It's so, and that's why I think is important. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're when you're that young, do right. you need to like express these things that you're unsure about? Because maybe at, at some point, everyone, I, whoever, however they identify right. themselves, right. struggle with some sort of identity or, you know, in, when it comes to sex, it's like it's it's very diff- it's very difficult. I feel like even straight people go through those emotions because yeah. you're not sure why you're necessarily connected with someone. Is it right? You don't know what that desire is. So um, yeah, it's very and like you said before. I think it can be really confusing. But just on the flip side, I would also say like um, you know I, I did a middle school talk at a at a, um, an amazing school uh, in Ohio. Like I don't I feel a little weird even mm-hmm. calling attention to this. It was like 700 kids. It felt like being in a rock stadium. Like they were so excited. So many of those kids then came to the bookstore event and sent me messages because there were some eighth graders there, so they were on social media about how amazing it was. But there was also this pushback from like this right wing conservative group that was like, Whoa. "You're pushing an agenda on our kids." And I was like, "Is it like you when you look at?" Um, so we uh, were we I'm, I'm like all over the place now. No. But we uh, we closed a, a TV adaptation deal for the book, so I've been watching a lot of uh, television shows that feel sort of like in the world of this book. And one of the ones that I've been watching is a show called The Wonder Years that was on mm-hmm. like in the 80s, I think, mm-hmm. or 90s. Mm-hmm. And 12-year-old Kevin Arnold, who's, you know, a straight white boy in the in the second episode, he's reading a book about everything you want to know about sex. And he's like, you know, he kisses Winnie Cooper in the first right. episode. And so this idea that like, um, like that's been so normalized, but I think that like LGBTQ kids also have those feelings, but we're taught that they're wrong. And like, if you're talking about that in at seventh grade, then you must not know. But right. it's like the straight kids know. And so I think there's, it is confusing, but I also feel like we have to, like you said before, like open up the possibility that like, it's okay if you're having those feelings, right. you know, like there's nothing wrong with you. Right. And, and so why do we let like a 12 year old straight kid have, like we sort of like, um, we sort of support his sexuality. Put him on a right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which we don't. And then that's anything. not the yeah. case when the kid is still figuring it out that's and right. probably isn't straight. Yeah, we're, we're taught know? that like, no, you're forcing an agenda. Exactly, you know, exactly. Just, exactly. So I think the idea of being like this all-American kid who plays sports, who is, you know, who has popularity, a girlfriend, girlfriend yeah, 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 you yeah. know. And you know, there's so out. many shows these days, <laughs> yeah. like, um, I, I mean, there's so many shows out there where the main character eventually figures out that they are more attracted towards a guy. And yeah, you yeah. kind of see the whole journey where He's a jock in the school, uh, plays basketball or football or soccer, whatever you call it in America. I'm sorry, I'm no idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then dumps his girlfriend, goes and marries a guy. Well, they're so, also, yeah. Okay, I mean, and that's fine because a lot of people are also trying to be the best at something, right? Yeah, right, and right. Also, kind of like hide from from the the reality, or right. they're still figuring it out. I mean, it, it's not conscious. Like they might be just self unconsciously like hiding from the reality and you know doing right. things that they think would be more approved by right. people. Right. Yeah, so, well, like, yeah, here's yeah, a question yeah. for you. When you meet the readers, uh-huh. um, I would say kids or their parents, because a lot of our friends have bought the book and given it to their uh, kids. Uh, so, so nice. our wedding photographer, uh-huh. she, she's she been texting me. She said that her kid has a copy of this. Oh my gosh. So, at so some happy. point, you have to sign a copy for me. Definitely. For Are you kidding? Well, but I think... What, <laughs> what message do you... What do kids come and tell you? Like, sh- would you want to share one instance where a kid walked up to you and you asked him or her how was the book or you asked the parent and what was their reaction like what did you get out of it yeah i mean so um sadly i'm like because i went on book tour right after the book came out so the book is well, it's only been out for a few months right. it came yeah. out in, in october um most of the times when i engaged with kids they hadn't fully read it right. but i have gotten a few like uh, um, messages 
like from people's parents on like Facebook or Instagram about after their kids have read it and like just how much it meant to them. But also, I think the big thing is like like the representation part, like the idea of like if it's the first time so many of them have seen themselves in a book. You know, sometimes I'll go to a school and I'll say, how many of you are reading a book with a lead Indian American character? Right. And like out of hundreds of kids, like maybe one hand will go mm -hmm. up. Um, a lot of times, none at all. One school I went to, they actually like, after I left that, they were like, we're so embarrassed. And they and the library created a shelf of like books featuring wow. Indian, Indian characters. That's, That's like, amazing. Like, real change. That, that yeah, change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, I would say That's that amazing. I literally met, I met Indian American kids who like have been on the verge of tears that are like, thank you so much. Like. I'm so excited to read a book. I've, you know, I've gotten messages that are like, oh my God, the aunties, I completely relate to the aunties. I have aunties <laughs> like that. Probably yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, and I've met, we were talking about this earlier, but I've, um, Rahul in the book um, struggles with obsessive compulsive yes. behaviors. And I, I was very careful in the book to not call it mm -hmm. a disorder just because a disorder um, needs to be diagnosed. And Rahul diagnosed, is not diagnosed. And, yeah. and it's, I think it has like certain parameters of uh, right. how debilitating it is. But he has these things and I had them. And I I've talked to too. kids who yeah. are like, oh, um, I never get to talk about that, or I, know, I, I haven't seen that in a book, and so that's been like pretty, pretty exciting too. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. it's not only connecting at the uh, uh, sexuality or being gay; it's connecting yeah. at different points throughout a kid's life yeah. and what they feel at different stages. I think so. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Like this is a book I would say, uh, basically any kid growing up, or right. if you're having a kid, read it because you know what, right. your kid might go through this one day, and you have to be that oh. parent who stands up and says it's okay. Yeah, I want to relate this to like my experiences, like um, as a teacher as well, because I teach dance. Yeah, and I see kids of all ages, like starting at age four, you know, all the way up to when they graduate and go off to college and stuff. And um, you know, we don't talk about these types of things. Obviously, we're dancing, but you can also see identity struggle like within mm -hmm. children. Um, I've had a lot of kids come to me who haven't been able to relate to being Indian at all, and through music and through through obviously dance, they've been able to just say, okay, this is kind of cool. Like uh -huh, I can still uh -huh. be cool and still, I can still also be American and, yeah. that, and be yeah, right. into all this. Right. Like I don't have to be defined as just being an Indian, yeah. um, which is also fine if that's what you're identifying as. Right. But I think right. um, I've seen that. I've also seen, I, I see kids who struggle with sexual, uh, like uh, identifying know. issues. Like they, and I see, and I've talked to parents who, who don't know and I say, you don't have to know. And it's right. okay. Like right. let the, let the journey happen. And for, for all those parents, and if you, if you, if you know me, if you know, like the things I like to support, um, are obviously the things I really believe in. I really do think parents and kids need to read this. Um, even if you read it together or if you don't read it together, give this to someone because I feel what you're, uh, what you're doing by, by sending them this message is like, it's okay to be yourself no matter at what point in life you are. And by reading it, I feel like those those kids, which are obviously kids are the most important, right. um, are going to un start understanding that their feelings are not just their own. Like they, other people can, you know, have gone through that or similar things. So um, really, I, I really feel like you should read this. So Malik, where yeah. can we get the book? For, for the viewers in India also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's available, it's actually available anywhere books are sold. <laughs> like, yeah. That's kind of like the tagline, but there's, um, there's an audio book if you don't love reading. There's a uh, the New York Times called it. <laughs> he looks at me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you read the book. I did. I did. Well, actually, <laughs> you know what? I'm really impressed because this is probably the first book in a long time which he's read. And he actually <laughs> called me. He's like, what chapter are you on? I'm like, what? What are you asking me? He's like, you're in the bus. You should read the book. I'm like, okay, I'm reading the book. I like it. So oh yeah, you were gosh. saying it's... Oh, there's well, there's an audio book that I uh, I narrated and it and it, it got... The New York Times called it one of the five best audio books to, awesome. to take on road trips Amazing. with kids. And, uh, that's great. Paste Magazine that named it one of its best audio books of the month. And so, it's, it, so that's a great way to listen to it if you don't love to read. But then you can get it on... You know, any independent bookseller, which I always, of course, uh, promote because they're the ones who are doing like, right. the good work of getting books into the right people's hands. But Barnes & Noble, Amazon, you can order it online. There's Kindle versions. There's ebooks. So it's, it's and pretty And also, you mentioned it before. I want to, yeah. and we didn't kind of, like, I want to focus on it. You said it's going to be adapted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, we yeah. go. So, yeah. So I can't, I can't, I'm not allowed to, like, put out all the details right now, but we're, we, um, I, I guess I, I always think we, because there's, like, agents and managers involved. Yeah. But we, uh, we, we're working with a, an amazing production company. We're waiting to do a big formal announcement. But, um, uh, but a studio has optioned the book, and we're now in the process of uh, creating the pilot 
episode of what it would, it would be be for television, which to me is so exciting because you know ultimately the book is about it's the perspective of a twelve year old Indian American kid who happens to be gay. He's actually just a twelve year old kid who happens right. to be Indian American who happens to be gay, but those things are important to him and they're parts of you know you were talking about like kids trying to figure out how Indian or how American to mm -hmm. be. One of the big moments in the book is. Um, a cultural festival happens and he gets to sort of be himself around his right. friends at school as opposed to like, you know, for growing up for me, it was like you were one way at school, like sort of like mm -hmm. American, whatever that means. And then on the weekends, you did Diwali and no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, like, and so it's like a yeah. way for him to bring this thing together. But so the idea that, that um, we would have a perspective potentially, hopefully, if it all goes forward, um, on television that goes into like millions of people's homes That's amazing. every week. Like, would be pretty and incredible. I think we need that yeah. at yeah. this point we need that because we need it. there's so many book adaptations so why not why don't you put a brown character out there yeah a kid because there's so many Indians in America it's it's almost like every other person yeah see. and yeah. any I feel like any yeah, minority, any, any minority. Yeah. I mean I, I think, think so any, yeah any minority. I'm super excited about that actually Thanks. yeah yeah absolutely. me too me too so <laughs> this and was... if you need a drama you know, yeah he, he drama can, yes. he, he'll bring yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> meanwhile I think he can do both pretty well <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm it do you dance uh I don't know. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. yeah. And you could drop yeah. Yeah. So you must have a garbage. Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh my god. Not you. The Gujus finally met. We've yeah. taken over the world, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> so Malik, this was great. Um yeah, thank I think you so much. Thank so you. Fun. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think all our viewers out there who's watched the live would go Wait. and get a copy because we answer some questions. Yeah, well the most important question they asked us was uh where can we get the book? Because I think uh folks in India really want to know that. Oh cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And um I think oh. the other question that we were getting a lot is I got another question that's good. Go ahead. Is he going to, um, Sam C says, is he going to write a second book? Oh, Subject ideas wow. for second good book. question, yeah. Sam C. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am uh, very excited about it. I had an amazing editor on this book and we had such an incredible um, friendship and working relationship. And so I'm actively trying to find that second book. I, I found it really rewarding writing. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you were going to ask me some questions about writing, but writing is really hard and yeah. it's yes, very solitary yes, yes. and it's, you know, as an actor, you're sort of in rooms with other people all the time, rehearsing or filming or, um, but I actually, I actually found it quite rewarding. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm looking for that. But for is the second yeah. book, I'm, I'm just going to dig in a bit more. I know you won't yeah, answer it, yeah, but I'm yeah. going to try. <laughs> so is it going to be Rahul's story going forward or? I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I, I, I'm hoping that that will exist in, um, On its the own? television world. Okay. Is okay. What, you know what I'm, what I'm hoping for, okay. but, um. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I think because that would be a great <laughs> angle because he's figured it out now what yeah. he's best at and what he does with it would be a great thing to see right. for all of us right. because every movie ends with everything, everyone being happy and, and figuring out. But what happens after that yeah. when... The next morning. Yeah, that, right. I think that would be something you should write about. Yeah. And I would yeah, love yeah. to read that as well. It's so funny, this when we originally, the book ended with a line about about the next day <laughs> and then I actually took it out because I felt it felt a little like we were forcing it something into it that didn't need to be there right. but I but I do think that's a big thing like what happens yeah. when you go to bed feeling good about yourself what do you do the next day with that right yeah. right absolutely yeah. but guys this was great uh so Molly, thank you guys for thank you so much in. yes for yeah, watching I'm trying to read video. if there's any more questions but um so I think we answered all of them there were a few but I think Molly spoke about it while we were talking can so. I just ask, ask this one more sure, yeah. sure. the last question I don't know if it's personal or yeah. not but I'm going to ask people let's do it asking <laughs> how was Molik's experience coming out to Indian parents. Ah, uh, yeah, wow. yeah. Um, it was definitely... because we, our audience, relate to that. Yeah. Um, and many kids relate to that. Relate yeah. to your book. Relate to you. So yeah. I mean, I, I will say, like, the thing that I sometimes am sad about is that I didn't have the courage to do it a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. um, both my mom and my dad had sort of like the normal like we're worried about you and what does that mean and we don't really know how to you know I think a big thing with from that I found with Indian parents is like we don't know how to help you right. and so that feels really scary to us um but they have both been amazing they um both love my husband they both were at my wedding um I do have like some extended family members that it's right. been more difficult with to be honest and like I've, I have lost some relationships that, you know over the years that that uh it was, you know, that's challenging. That's, that's really, really hard. But I think on the other side of it, I also 
gained a lot of love and like greater relationships mm-hmm, with the mm-hmm. other people in my life who now who really know who I am and I can be my myself right. with. You know, so. isn't that so interesting? Because I feel mm-hmm. I feel the same struggle in terms of like thinking in your head for years and years that like you're gonna lose everyone. Yeah, and you feel like yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna have anyone right. left. And then I felt like yeah, you you've lost a couple, but then the ones that really matter. I feel like there's a different bond with those yeah, people, right? We well, just so like much share everything deeper. with them. Absolutely. I just remember, like you know, like all those years of like lying to my cousins, you know, like oh, you know, like being in a, being in a relationship with one of my cousins. We're yeah. we're like really really close, and they'd be like, "Hey, we're coming to town to visit," and I was like, "I have to hide someone from you," which is so silly. And know, now you know, it's like we all now we're family. Like, and it's, it's very damaging family. for the relationship as well. It I mean, is. You're literally hiding your boyfriend or husband. Like, okay, just it's so not oh, fair to the other it's person. Like, yeah. It's also we don't give enough credit to people. Right? Yeah, because I feel like people do understand. Parents do, many of them do understand, and we should give them more credit. Yeah, because yes. all of our parents, yes. we were lucky enough. Uh, that's what guys say. Yep. Um, but I think but it's like a band aid. It's never going to be easy. Never. You just have to rip it off, no. and you see what happens <laughs> yeah. after that. Sometimes yeah. that's the line my mom gave. <laughs> Actually, yeah. just rip it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah because no. uh, his mom helped me come out to my parents. Oh wow! So uh, she told me that. She said uh, it's never going to be easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy for her. And how did it go for you? Uh, great, actually. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. They were yeah, upset. Absolutely. But now, like, first thing they ask me is, how's it? I'm like, yeah. why don't you FaceTime me if you want to know? <laughs> why are you calling me? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've gained so much more from coming out and being ourselves than we have yeah. in any and, other time. And to, like, to people who do come out to their families and are left behind and are abandoned, I... You know, the thing that Mm -hmm. I always say is, like, there is an amazing community of people that are ready to welcome you with open arms. And I actually, you know, not to, like, bring it back to the book, but I I feel like part of it is, like, your story matters. Exactly. Like, your story matters, and, like, and people want to tell it, and people want to embrace it, and, yeah, just know that, you know, I think one of the amazing things about um, our communities and living in, also, like, living in big cities, we form our own families as well. We have, like, we have multiple families, and... Especially in New York and uh, New Jersey area. I mean, your family just isn't your bloodline. It's everybody, everybody. else who you meet. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I think that would be the last question. But this was great. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is Malik. And that's the book, The Best at It. And we read it. And we want you to read it. We're going to add a swipe up link so yes. you can read it online. Yes. Uh, or you can get a hard copy. Um, or if you want to hear more like audiobook speak about well. it, the audiobook is the there audiobook. too. Yeah, so yeah, yes. Yeah. And this was fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. I'm so glad I was Guys, by the way, this is the first time we actually met in person. I know. And yeah, I it know. was very organic. But like, I will say, like, you guys feel like family. Like, I think that oh, is... Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. And this yeah. book couldn't have come at a better time because we just got married and the book came. So it was like... Well, wow, you know, amazing. It, while amazing. reading this, I felt like I already kind of knew you, which is kind of weird, right? Like, it's like that. I do put a lot of myself into that. Like, the details, you cannot write those if you have an experience. Experience those. Right. I, I really felt like that. Oh, good. But thank you for writing such a beautiful book. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for inspiring so many kids out there. So if you think your kid wants to read this or as a parent you want to read this, go grab your cap copy. And thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aditya. This is Molik. That's Amir. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning thank in. Thank you.